cycle chart of women. And I was surprised. It was like spaghetti. You know, <laughs> many different hormones. Estrogen, progesterone, prolactin, and many of them that I cannot even remember. Just an, an intertwined chart of hormones in various talking about the women he works with i think it also comes with experience these women they've been there for a long time they've been able to like all you said manage separate themselves from their work and everything like that it comes with doing it over and For over the right again. Man, what can your male friends do to help you during this time i'm already happy that we don't need to buy chocolates and flowers <laughs> but, but be practical if you can be practical with bullet points what can your male friends do to help i love them? that like, i love that Welcome to another episode of Banches That Edify with Abish Dwelling, where we turn inspiring stories into beautiful conversations and discuss topics that don't just entertain, but also edify. So sit back, grab a popcorn or your favorite snack and enjoy the ride. It promises to be fun. Welcome to another episode of Banters That Edify with Abba's Dwelling. Um, my name is Joy and I'm honored to be your host for this section. Uh, today I have three guests with me and we are looking forward to having a, a lovely discussion. Today we'll be discussing a very intriguing topic, handling mood swings. But before we dive into it, I would love my guests to introduce themselves. So. Hi, my name is Oluchi. You're welcome, you Oluchi. You should say hi, my name is Oluchi and I'm a girl, right? Because this episode is for you girls. Okay, so hi, my name is Oluchi and I'm a girl, obviously, from the sound of my voice. <laughs> okay, okay, I think that's the just first that we are doing. So, yeah. hello, my name is Olamide Grace. Um, I am happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And my name is Fate. I'm a guy. I was brought in here <laughs> to balance the conversation. So thank you for having me. The only guy that we have in here. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so we'll go on. I think um, the first thing I would like us to actually talk about is if mood swings are real, mm-hmm. right? I would like to <laughs> hear from mostly the ladies. I think mood swing is something that is mostly associated with ladies right so yeah. sometimes i i believe we have guys that that might be listening to this podcast right now and they would want to know is mood swing really real or maybe it's just a makeup right yeah. for for character deficiency or something like that so mm. so i would like us to begin with that i don't know maybe olamide you can help us with that all right um i'll start off by saying that i don't believe that mood swings is just for ladies i i think that's a stereotype and it's very wrong and when guys begin to you know have emotions or have mood swings and they're like oh my god i shouldn't feel like this and then they even feel worse because they're having mood swings it's so wrong and it's something i think we should um reorientate ourselves to understand that this thing is for people generally everybody experiences mood swings because mm-hmm. most time mood swings is a, is a is a function of our response to stimuli to environment different things that happen in our lives and i believe that guys don't have one thing happening in their lives different things happen to them as well i mean it is more expressive in women because sometimes it um has to do with a menstrual cycle and then it's like okay now it's a very obvious and everything but okay just starting off with that so again I can't remember your question actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's real and you have experienced yes, yes, it, right? Yes, yes. Most things is it's it's very real. It's a, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. not just an excuse for nah. you know? no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Okay. It's, I love yeah. something you mentioned that mood swing is it it can actually be um experienced by both females and males. And we have mm-hmm. a male right here, so let's confirm that. <laughs> so um Pate, could you uh, let us know if you've truly have you experienced mood swings is it you know i don't think that Bofati is the best experience shall well, I, I i could see i could see all that you roll her eyes when you mentioned my name <laughs> I, I think i have mood swings when i'm hungry like once my once, once i'm hungry my, my mood swings in one direction that's interesting then, then when i eat okay. it I'm, i i am joking 
I'm joking. Let me be serious. <laughs> Let me be serious. Um, I, I'm, I'm matured enough. When I was a child, maybe, but now not anymore. No, I don't have. Okay. I don't think I have mood swings. I know, um, but it could be that there are different types of people, right? There are yeah. boys who are more in touch with their emotions. Yeah. Uh, there are boys who are more emotional than others. Uh, I'm not saying I don't have emotions, but based on what I know mood swings to be, right? Um, like uh, Olamide said, it's it's a response to stimuli in the environment. But I think boys and girls are wired to respond differently. So yeah. um, what what I imagine based on my interactions with my female friends that mood swings are is something I have not seen with boys. I, um, I... Man, many things happen. Right, many things happen. Um, there can be there can be changes in the in moods um, normally, uh, but it is not anywhere near as intense, as frequent, and as impactful as the kind of thing I see with my female friends. So I'll stop mm. there. Olishi, you wanted to say something. Yes, I wanted to say that. Um, Alamdi mentioned something when she was speaking. In fact, I feel like men also experience because if you look at the word mood swing that's like your changes in your mood probably during mm-hmm. the course of time right i think the only reason why um it's so peculiar to a people like stereotype it to women is because um of the form of expression that women give when um they are experiencing it so when, because women maybe they cry they are sad or they are just like they don't want to talk to anybody or something like that or they're overtly ex- excited or something like that but for men i believe that generally when it comes to emotions they express it very differently compared to um, women so a man can be sad and still decide to go and watch football and still be chilling with his guys she gets doesn't mean that he's not experiencing it but it just means that his expression of it is completely different so i think the expression of women's mood swing is actually the one that is swinging not the, the emotion in itself because i i also because so the, the the fact that men don't express it the way women do you get doesn't mean that you see a man watching a football match that is mood swing in the highest form it's just that it's expressed <laughs> Is expressed differently. He's sad. He's happy. He's moving up and down. But if it was a woman, probably she could have been crying. Then she's happy, or then that kind of thing. Thing. So I think. I, mean, no sex I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Another thing I want to mention is we need to think of the biology of it. And I was waiting for you to mention this before I come in, but it seems that I have to be the one to mention it for you. Um, where well, Olamide said uh, mood swings happen in response to stimuli, right, in the environment. And I want to add, and of course, I'm not a medical doctor, but this shouldn't be a secret. Mood swings also are in response to changes, internal changes in the body's hormonal balance. Now, when we go inside the body, it's a different ball game for men and women. I once looked at the emotional, sorry, the hormonal cycle of a man, right? I think a man's major problem is testosterone. And testosterone operates in 24-hour cycles. Testosterone is at its peak in the morning and then it dwindles in the evening. Um, that's what makes men um, manly, macho, you know, aggressive, able to attack challenges and tasks. So men have this testosterone, testosterone at its peak in the morning and it dwindles all through the day. And by the next morning, it's at its peak again. So men are designed to work by 24-hour cycles. They are designed to go to work every day. When a man feels bad or tired or every, anything, what he needs to do is to sleep. That's all. And the next day, you wake up a champion again. That's how nature has done it. And then I looked at the hormonal cycle chart of women. And I was surprised. It was like spaghetti. You know, <laughs> many different hormones. Estrogen, progesterone, prolactin, and many of them that I cannot even remember. Just an, an intertwined chart of hormones in various non-predictive cycles so women have monthly cycles men have daily cycles right so typically there's this one week during the month when things go you know south or haywire in your body that's natural there's, there's no prayer against it right so when you consider that internal factor women generally have more fluctuations from one mood to another than men wow 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 that's interesting 
Lamide, would you want to add anything to that? Not really add anything. Okay, maybe just add something. I was going to agree with what he said because that's why I mentioned um, the issue with the menstrual cycle and everything. But then again, I'm just still trying to say because some men have, I think there's there's some there's such thing as maybe low testosterone, something something about some medical issues as well that happen with guys. Not everybody has um, a healthy level of I don't know how to pronounce the, the word. It's kind of hard. Yeah, and yeah. so that also affects. So in general, like what we're just still saying the same thing, right? It's just different in expression. Some guys, like as I said, might not be in touch with their emotions. Mm-hmm. Even I don't think that's it. But <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love um, what we've mentioned. Like biologically, like mood swings uh, is associated with the maybe hormonal uh, the changes in hormones right for yeah. females and for males maybe sometimes also for some of the men's their reaction to the environment and all of that now um i think i would like us to talk about this if uh, mood swings are you know associated with changes in hormones and it's not my fault right i don't just decide to change my mood <laughs> <laughs> I don't just decide to change my mood and all of that. Now, the question is, should these actually be handled? Why don't I just, you know, leave it since it comes once in a For instance, now for females, during uh, your menstrual um, cycle, you go through all of these uh, hormonal changes and then the, the, the mood swing and all of that. Then should it be handled? Why don't we just leave it that way? And if it should be handled, why? Okay, so I would like us to talk about this because I think there might be some people who are listening and say, okay, I agree with you, this actually happens and all of that, but why should I handle it? Why should I think of handling it, right? What's the need for that? So Since it I don't is natural, know. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know who would want to impute on that. <laughs> the question <laughs> is very, actually, you need to actually, you, have, you need to think to actually answer it. So what's the first part of the question? You probably, don't need to, you, probably, you probably don't need to think so much. The question is why um, why do you need to, to, why do you need to handle it? Should it be and handled? There, 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 is, there, is a, there is a plain answer that may not be nice. Right, get ready, get ready, get ready. Take a deep breath. So, now, <laughs> the simple answer is that because the whole world does not revolve around you. Why? Wow. Yeah. You have yeah. responsibilities. If you're a student, you have classes. You have relationships. Yeah. They don't adjust your exam you time they don't, they don't exact um, adjust your exam timetable because you are you have a bad mood, right? Yeah. yeah. If you are if you are working, you have a boss, you have KPIs. If you are a parent, you have children to take care of. If you are a pastor, you have members, right? So because the whole world doesn't revolve around you, um, it is necessary for you to do all you need to do to make sure that your uh, responsibilities are not left hanging because you have some mood issues. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And also because how you feel inside actually um, reflects on how you feel outward, outwardly. So in as much as we just think it, it's just mood swings, it goes a long way in affecting your body, in affecting almost everything about you. But I'm trying to emphasize the body parts because then you realize that you, the more you don't handle your mood swings, the more unhealthy you become, the more mood swings you have, and it just goes on, it goes on and on, and it's just going to become frustrating, and you're going to start existing instead of living. Mm-hmm. So it's a big deal. You have to actually handle it. It's, it's not even something that you have to, you can choose not to do. Wow, powerful. Yes, Oluchi, would you like to add something? No, I want to just say, I actually do agree with, um, like, Mobufati and Dolam they said because when you ask the first thing that came to my mind is you no know, relationships because you're not living by yourself, right? As me, you were just like of course I would I'll say it in a nicer way. As me just living in your own but in your own world, do you get it would have been um easy for you to just like and because you're living by yourself, right? But because you're also relating with other people that don't understand what's happening with you, they can only see your face. They don't know what is happening inside your body and it's better for you it's more it's it's i think yeah it's better for you to know how to to handle it so that you can be able to have good relationships and most things are not your life right so you can yeah. make I think there was something that someone told me that if you in the name of mood swings like destroy relationships hmm. that's thing that does happen for like one day or when one when the mood swings back 
what happened to the relationship? <laughs> when you become normal, you're like, wait, what happened? I just destroyed this friendship. I just destroyed this relationship. I just maybe left my job and slammed the door at my um, at my Your boss's manager. face. <laughs> wow. my manager, just because, and how will I go back and tell him? I said, sir, um, you know, it's that time of the month. So that kind, mm-hmm. I think it was that line that um he said that made me to realize that okay, this is something that um so something that we should i should personally like pay attention to and to and and yeah so for the sake of relationships i don't want to just like emphasize on that very very well wow that's really powerful that's really powerful. i don't know if you've been listening so far right this is quite interesting i would like to repeat some of the points that were mentioned because i feel they are very very important to be noted right why should i handle my mood swings i uh, will we we heard that first the world does not revolve around you <laughs> so get that in <laughs> there are a lot of things that are going on right the second point i think for they mentioned that, that what happens inside you kind of reflects on your outside right maybe the reason why you're even being lazy with doing some works is based on the mood swing right yeah, and yeah. if that keeps repeating you find out that your life is not being effective it's not being productive and then oluchi also mentioned something that you are not your mood swings right so what happens when the <laughs> when the moon swings back? What happens, right? When you get back to yourself and all of that, you must have destroyed a lot of things. So um, looking at these reasons, I think it's very important for us to know or for us to know how to handle um, mood swings, right? Yes. So before we we'll go into that, I think we'll take a short break. But before we and- take the break, can I just say something to this question that you that you asked and I will just, Please, I just can. add and that reason why we should handle our, the, our mood swing is because of our you know, like self-image, the, the image that we have in the sense that if you are someone that is always like always falling into your emotional um desires, your emotional traps and everything like that, you would people your people the way people view you will not be good at all now we're not mm. living to please people Jiggy, we're not living so that so people are like oh my god this guy's a good girl and everything like that but um, as children of god right as as sons and daughters of, of of jesus there's a view that people should have of us right someone that represents christ so if you you are you're, you don't feel good or you don't feel happy and everything and you just do something really nasty in the sake of your of your emotions like you it just gives a very 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 wrong image of who jesus christ is and that's the person that we're supposed to actually be representing so for the sake of your self-image that's just the fourth point wow thank you thank you so much thank you so much and thank you to our listeners who have been listening so far so we'll go on a short break and we'll come back in a minute see you Thank you. If you're enjoying this conversation, can you share this with your friends and family members? Follow us on appleswelling.com for more edifying and interesting stories. And if you do decide to follow us on our social media, we are on Instagram, apples underscore dwelling and apples dwelling on Facebook. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the conversation now. Okay, welcome back our beloved listeners. If you are just joining us, this is Banters That Edify with Abad's Dwelling. And we've been talking about mood swings. Yes, and um, before we went on a break, we talked about the reasons why we should handle our mood swings. And right now, we'll be going to the practicality of it, right? (laughs) Okay, so um, I don't know. I would like... Some of us to share our experiences with handling mood swings okay so i think i'll begin with Tolamide. yes <laughs> our <special> reaction <laughs> no. Like, no no <laughs> please can um. you tell us <laughs> like maybe you can give us an example of a situation where you had that and wow. how you were able to handle it oh my goodness <laughs> you guys are putting me on the spot but um, I think I'll first say I'm a naturally I'm naturally emotional, and that makes mood swings more difficult for me as a person. And um, it was something I had to identify and be like, 
okay, that's that's serious. And when I, I saw how um, bad it can be for me personally, it helped me you know, create some structures, I would say, around myself and just do some things differently, right? So like we, we said, we mentioned before about the menstrual cycle stuff. I noticed that there's, there are particular weeks that is just nothing you do in this world will please me. <laughs> I'm upset at everything. I'm sad. I just don't even want to have any human relations with you yet. And normally before I would just be by myself and not talk to anybody and just dwell in it, sit in it, enjoy the sadness. But now I think that has changed a whole lot. So for, for example, I mean, now I start, I try to communicate my feelings. I try to say, okay, you know what? We're about to have this conversation, but I'm not really feeling too good. or I'm not about to give my hundred. I'm going to try, but just be patient with me. Sometimes if I realize that maybe I'm talking, I'm getting too emotional, if it's over a call. I remember one time I was having a discussion with someone. It was, I think it was something very serious, not something that should make me cry on a normal day. But because of mood swings, I was getting to that extent. And I was like, you know, wow. will you please excuse me for a while? I need to gather my thoughts. I need to gather myself together. And we can have this conversation later. And that was it. I went off, I had my thing, and later I called back. And person up to date, you always say that that was one of the most um, intense moments, is, yes, re- like we remembered in our friendship because it's like, it respected the fact that number one, I, I understood where I was. Number two, I didn't want, I didn't make the mistake of, I could just start shouting, start, you know, acting like someone that is <laughs> not okay. But just doing that made him realize that, wow, this is some level of maturity. At the point, I didn't even think it was maturity. I, was, I just thought it was me taking care of myself and my mental health. So, <laughs> so I think for me, that's one experience that is dear to my heart. I want to ask something. I want to ask, not add. I have nothing to add. <laughs> that's interesting. What you're, okay. what, you're, what you're saying is that you're having a conversation and you suddenly felt like crying for nothing. Not for nothing. Like the conversation was was kind of maybe Emotional. sad or something. So just a touchy moment or let's say an emotional moment but okay. if it was in a normal day i wouldn't have gone to that extreme of feeling like that extreme sadness and crying mm. so the most thing just added to to it because i'm i was already at the at the edge okay. of yeah so you just like so, ah. so it can intensify a natural yes. emotion right yeah. yes yes so yeah. something that would because... make you want to cry before something that is just normal yeah. just just because like a big deal. You can just see a puppy and you're like, oh my goodness, why is it so cute? Are you really too much? Are you feeling like crying? <laughs> this guy. Oh my god. I know, Fat, I know. Yeah, because <laughs> it's you weird. Know, somehow, it's strange, somehow, it's true. yeah, you yeah, can't feel it. We, we somehow suspect that you girls exaggerate this thing. Yeah. Uh, like, really, what is that? What is that? Is it every time? You know, but then I had an experience not too long ago, a couple of months ago, and I was looking for a church. So I tried going to a couple of new churches. In fact, I'm still on that journey. And on my, on my first day in this church, I met this girl, hospitality usher girl. She was very nice and welcoming me. So when I, when I asked a lot of naive questions, she said, are you new in town? And I was just about a week in, here in the UK. So I said, yes. She said, when did you come? I said, last week or something like that. She said, oh, my baby. And she started crying. She started crying. And Seriously? yes, real tears were coming out, and she she had to wipe her tears. I was looking at her, and I was transfixed. I didn't understand what is this one, from where, yeah. how, what should I do? Then she saw she saw me trying to yeah present know what to do, thing. and she said that she said don't 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 worry, don't mind me. It's there's something she said, don't mind me. It's just it's natural, or it's just my mood or something. I said ah now nah, wow yeah ah, ah. is that how this thing is. Yeah. No, sometimes if you're not careful, you literally think you're crazy. Yeah. But it's like, I, I don't mm-hmm. understand why is, this is... <laughs> yeah, I, I'll let you can go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, go I, ahead. I'm just completely agreeing with you. And I think, well, I think I wanted to mention that that is why it is very necessary to actually know that this stuff is real. And, <laughs> and, and because for me, right, I... I I didn't ever think about it. I just because m- for me mood swings happen especially more during my cycle, right? And because it happens once a um one week 
in a month or sometimes two times two weeks in a month it's sometimes very hard to draw the the um pattern so it was a particular time i now started to draw the pattern and now realize that okay this is this is the time the period of time when it was happening i didn't know and i believe that knowing that having that knowledge that it was related to this really helped me a whole lot it took time actually but it's it helped me to start to realize that okay i can't like continue living my life subject to this i can't continue mm-hmm. doing like doing things subject to this so realizing that okay yes this is actually real realizing that um um realizing that it affects a lot a number of girls because i think at a particular time i wrote something about it and then some girls actually like commented like oh my god i never knew that this was what it was it happens to me a lot and just random girls actually and i was like okay so knowing that like this thing actually affects quite a number of people and it is actually a genuine thing and made me to realize that okay this is something that i should work upon and then there was something that i wrote down when i was thinking about the topic right and i realized that most times in conversations there are something called this is just me that's giving it terminology silence triggers and sometimes unspoken triggers in for the mood swings so like the whole they gave an example also like she was having a conversation so her mood was not stable and then they were talking about something that no matter have made her cry and she started to cry i realized that sometimes we try or maybe let's say we try i try sometimes to ignore these things like yeah. those those triggers and still go head on into the conversation and that's what i used to do before right yeah, I sorry that- i'll cut you, i'll cut you there you continue it was actually on my mind like can't you like i think some people try to deny it right yes like, yes to deny that it happens to you wouldn't yes. that be like a solution no 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 mm-hmm. denying it is, is definitely are you talking about denying the occurrence of mood swings or denying the occurrence of these triggers maybe you've been having these triggers right someone mm-hmm. has been experiencing this but you don't just want to call it that you keep denying it i don't have mood swings i don't no. have like mood. i think one of the points we've mentioned is like realizing that this is normal and it's then biology. when it happens yes, yes yeah and then i think that's like as we've mentioned is a path to handling it yes, like yes, a step definitely. you need to take so so what about like just denying it like acting like it doesn't exist that's like it true. doesn't exist when I mean, you are acting, actually experiencing it because it, your if, cup will get full one day and right. that's the thing about it or in fact you want to add something no 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 i i mean this is your talk, your talk <laughs> i think so. that i think your your cup will get full one day and i have experienced it you said that the person you are talking to has done totally nothing to deserve what you are giving back to him or what you are giving back to her and then at the end you just feel so much pity and you feel so bad and you start feeling sad and it worsens your mood swing because you are feeling bad because you did something wrong that you should not have done based on your emotions and it just is like a cycle right but when i was talking about silent triggers right there's some things that actually silently trigger these emotions right sometimes it's already there right but identifying those things sometimes these silent triggers can actually be people that you actually talk to i think i'm only talking about how to handle your mood swings i'm not supposed to be saying this now yeah yeah that's um, all we are identifying people right that probably actually have the highest tendency to to push you and these are not people that are bad people these are not people that you hate or most people but people that probably have the highest powers to 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 how you feel or to your it emotions may, it may be helpful to to give examples of what these triggers are actually actually uh, it could it be anything jokes? that's the thing about yes. it it could mm-hmm. be a conversation you can maybe you're talking about something and normally the person calls you big head and you don't have a problem with the person calling you big head and the person calls you big head today and you just realize that you actually have a big head and you don't want to have a big head <laughs> and it makes you feel so bad that you have a big head this is just putting it lightly jigga because some for some people it's much more like serious issues serious things so it could be anything actually you could like you could see it could be anything that's the thing about it based on your your personal life i think for me let me give an example if i'm doing something like i'm working on a project or i'm just involved in something right i always want everything to like be come out nice and everything so when i'm 
in that period right i learned how to detach myself from the project itself because the moment something is wrong with that work the moment someone says that your t is supposed to be a capital letter but why is it a small letter that that very tiny that very tiny comment could actually make me feel so bad like extremely bad you would think it's beyond the the um the, that simple comment so during that period of time what i used to do actually before is that when um when i realized that my like my prayers coming close and my emotions are everywhere i used to just try and like not talk to people a lot and just like to keep my sanity but i realized that that's not the best because i can't not stop talking to people a lot even if i'm working but i just started to um to i'm asking god to actually help me and which is a very remember talk, when you actually ask i'll talk about it like more later asking god for help in that area i started to also kind of understand that i am not what i am doing right so if i'm doing a project and it's not going on well and someone says oluchi you should have added something to this oluchi this is not correct something like, oluchi can you add something to it even if they say oh this is nice but can you do something else you get my it just makes me feel so bad that okay that, why didn't i think about that initially so i just realized that okay, my project is not me and so the part the fact that this person is, is is um is talking about this doesn't mean that this person is actually maybe insulting you or anything it's just the project only so don't take it too personal and just like work on it it's it's been a process and initially it wasn't easy but yeah. i think with time god has actually been helping me and it's been it's 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 been good something came to my mind as you were talking and i this might be a little distraction or this might be further on the agenda so if it's any of these joy you can just when i ask it you can just um, adjourn it until then it, but it dropped in my mind so i feel i should mention it now okay could could this then be the reason for i don't know exactly how to ask it but um there's there's this debate about women and men in the marketplace right why men climb higher on the corporate ladder why men are more successful why men earn more could this be one of the reasons behind that because if this happens for a week in the month or sometimes twice depending on the i think there's the pre what do you call it premenstrual syndrome yeah 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 that thing right so it happens before and then you have the actual thing that i think should drastically reduce one's productivity right so when you're a student then maybe your work depends on you mostly but when you get into the marketplace you get into a team your department you have stuff to do right so uh, doesn't that predispose a woman to um, perform less naturally than a man because she's less effective and then by the time you extrapolate this right across um, a, a number of years then eventually you would have men generally performing better and so at the top of the organizations and that would be an explanation for the argument now uh, because we, there's this argument about equalizing wages right but then um, men do not have this kind of thing I don't know if you get my question yeah yeah, yeah. Oluche, what would you want to say on that? Well, I actually do not disagree. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about that, I actually do not disagree because when I compare my productivity, like I, I'm not, I don't think I'm the most, I'm the most productive woman on earth, right? But when I compare like my my productivity level to maybe buffetism, for example, I just realize <laughs> that. I don't it's not it's not even possible. Right? And Buffati has to be like the most logical guy man that I know in my entire life. And I think they are really quite wow. yeah, it's not a compliment. Wow. Really? <laughs> it's not a compliment. Nope. So, so you you'd rather prefer if I'm illogical. No, no, I didn't say that. I did not say that. So mm-hmm. like and I think that most of the men that actually succeed like in that in like the top guys are people that are actually able to think like very, very, very logical and to go regardless of keep moving, regardless of things external, internal, anything now <laughs> things. And I, I really believe it's same. Um, it's it actually does affect it actually. It does. I do not I do not disagree. I have seen some women actually like do the best with their life and those are women that probably come to understand their body their biology and everything yeah. so i realize that a woman will go very far but then mm. 
a man will not i think i was talking to my friend and he said that there's even though chess is a mental game there's still female chess and there's male chess can you imagine <laughs> can, you can you imagine, imagine? yeah <laughs> <laughs> so she, it was like why is it why, yeah. why, why is it why is there that divide mm. right because i think women and men are just structured like very differently and if you listen to this transgender debates and everything the reason why they don't want um transgender men to participate in women's sports is because they don't have the same problems that actual women have so a woman could be actually be having a very serious race tomorrow or she'll be swimming tomorrow and she starts to have menstrual cramps and she's ah. everywhere ah. so what would she do but a transgender <laughs> man doesn't have all these things so it just to just bring the fact that um a transgender woman doesn't have all these things just just being for that men and women are actually like completely different and their biology setup is completely completely different so yes i think it could mm. actually be a an addition yeah. to it yeah i mean there's there's a lot of push nowadays to have uh well i think i should not mention that now because it takes us along a different path <laughs> but if you want to know i worked for about a year and a half and i had two managers um who were women I was managed by two women and a man, right? And I can say I preferred my female managers to the male managers. I actually got to conclude that my female managers were by far smarter than the men at their rank, you know? And they were managing me every day with so much effectiveness. I, I couldn't even guess when they were having a mood swing. And I don't think a superhuman Maybe there's a way they use some pills. I don't know. But to be honest, they are very, very, very highly placed in these organizations and super effective, right? So just so that no girl would relapse and think that it's not possible to succeed in the marketplace because of this. I use this as an excuse. <laughs> yes, it's definitely not an excuse at all. Definitely. Yeah. I think the question actually makes it, um, I don't know, like shows the importance of learning how to handle these mood swings, right? If you yes. really want to get to like where you plan to get to in the future and all of that, then there is need for you to have the knowledge about it and also how to handle it, yes. right? Yes. So, okay, I think I think that's where we'll go into now. I think what you were mentioning, while Olamide was mentioning about like, talking about her experience, she actually talked about a few ways that she was able to handle her mood swing. I think she mentioned communicating um, her emotions, right? And Oluchi as well, you you talked about something. So let's go into details now. How can one handle this mood swing? How can we handle it? This is the most interesting part for me. <laughs> you want to know? Yeah. So you said it, you the, said the, it the to reason, your people. The reason is that there is so much um, on the internet about buying her chocolates. First of all, let me tell you the bigger problem. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you this now. I once had a conversation with my one of my female friends about mood swings. And then I went to YouTube to search for how should a woman handle mood swings. I just wanted to know. And I kid you not, the first 15 to 20 results were about teaching a man how to handle his woman's mood swing. Right, so man, this is how to handle your woman when she has her mood swings. This is how to handle your this. this so I wondered, why is a woman's mood swings seen as a man's problem to handle? <laughs> right? Why is no one teaching women how to handle themselves? And then when I went to go into some of the things we were talking about, buy her chocolates, surprise her with flowers, leave a romantic note under her pillow. Um, um, I have nothing. I have nothing against that. But it felt no. There must be something more to this. Is then is then no? Why why don't we have some matured Christian women who are intelligent talking about this from a biological, spiritual point of view? You know. So I want to hear what you girls will say about this. Before before Olamide speaks, I want to say that I think sugar actually has plays. Um, I don't know how. I don't I don't study biology, right? So I think there's something in chocolate that just makes it better. For you. <laughs> So let me you can start. That was just a joke. I think everything Fatim mentioned about what he watched about a man hand. I think that's what men should do normally, whether she has motives or not. So that's really like, oh, what's yeah. that? That's by the I agree. I agree with you. Chocolates, chocolates, <laughs> flowers, 
and romantic um, notes, right? <laughs> I'll take note of that. <laughs> okay, um, about handling emotions. I, I loved what Oluchi said. The first thing that is that you have to identify. For the longest of time, you just think that um, I'm just like that, or this just happens. But if you never really identify what is the cause or even know when, you will just keep on living like that and then you'll just see that okay this is happening but if you don't know if you're not able to identify the source you're not you're not able to identify such details as when and all those things you would never really be able to handle it but some people it's not not every time that it's because of well, menstrual cycle some people are just more in touch with their emotions like what i said and so for them even though they are, they are not on their period, they are almost always on their period. <laughs> so for such people, you have to be more careful. You have to be, take more precautions. You have to be more deliberate about handling your emotion. So that being said, I think secondly, after identifying it, then you have to build structures. Because again, the world does not revolve up around you. There are certain people that are closer to you. There are certain people that, that are around you. There are more in your circle that can trigger you, like all you said. So it's okay to mention to them because they're not God. They don't always know that, okay, this is what's happening. Some people have come to so close to you that they know already. You don't have to tell them just your facial expression. Ah, don't, don't bother her. She's like that. I mean, she's not in, in the best of moods. But there are sometimes you just have to communicate and say, I'm sorry, I'm like this. Or I'm so just doing that actually really helps and helps people to still respect you for who you are, understanding that that's, you're just in that season of life also taking breaks because i i see that sometimes we just want to push ourselves to to some limits that we have not attained yet like Pater was talking about the women he worked with i think it also comes with experience these women they've been there for a long time they've been able to like all people said manage separate themselves from their work and everything like that it comes with doing it over and over again if you just if you're not doing, if it's not something that you, you are conscious of, you will not be able to have that experience and you will not be able to handle it properly. So I think just having those three things, resting actually, like, please, ladies, rest. I'm showing you on your periods, like God is just giving you that opportunity that says you need to take that time to, to, to just think about your life, number one. You need to also take that time to spend, spend time with God. That's one thing. No more time when we talk about biology, it's like, oh, well, maybe God can't really handle this. But I realized that the more time I spend with God, it's easier to handle these emotions because joy is there bubbling in my heart. And even though the biology wants to put in some sadness or some anger or some resentment or some bitterness, it's not as intense as it would be if I, I didn't have a living relationship with Jesus at that time of my life. Mm. So having a very healthy relationship with Jesus, having a healthy relationship with people, having a healthy relationship with yourself, being in touch with yourself, really help you to manage your mood swings properly. So I think that's a summary. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Very powerful points you mentioned there. Identifying this, communicating, taking breaks. Wow. Thank you so much. And Oluchi, would you like to add something to that? Yes, actually, I actually just have two points. All of them mentioned like quite a number of them, but I want to draw an example from that taking time with the Holy Spirit. Right? I think when 2020 to um, February, I was in a quest. I was in a quest because um, I had gotten to a point in time where I was tired. I was tired of of myself. And I was tired of the consistent swings and everything. I was so, so frustrated. And I needed to talk to someone like a female who was like up there who was older than me in that as this experience. But the problem is that at that moment, right, it's as if I didn't find. And I yeah. I thank God I didn't find because I feel like if I had found some because I, not when I, mean, I did find out, I searched, but it was as if the conversation wasn't just happening. But I realized that when I went to God by myself, that was when like things started to work out. I felt like if I had probably spoken to somebody about it, they would have really helped me, which is not a problem, which people can actually do. But I, it was 
God helped me. I think that's what I can say. I remember a particular time. It was actually very recently, maybe like three weeks ago, and I was I was having a conversation with somebody, and it was I was already very in a very 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 bad mood already, and then it was just getting worse, 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 and. I think I just stopped the conversation and I took time to just go and pray and read my Bible and listen to songs and sermons. And when I came back to the real world, it was just, it was as if, why was I even mad in the first place? I was like, I was like, hey, how are you? And apologized. Like, okay, I'm sorry for, for, for speaking like this. I was, I just, you get that kind of thing. And I realized that it sounds like no you should like god won't understand right but once i realized is that god the holy, the holy spirit actually actually understands and the question i was asking in february 2022 was that to what extent does the cross have a working in my soul so i know that god has god just cast me to the cross of Calvary, delivered me from sins and everything but then to what level does this affect my soul and i realized that i am a new creature and this new creature that I am is Jesus Christ, right? And in every area of my life, my spirit man, my my soul man, and my you know my body my voice, I should express the the person of Jesus Christ, right? And it made me to realize that what was happening to me wasn't say is as it is as bad as committing fornication, right? That is how I I saw it because if Jesus Christ has done this work on me if it is as bad as committing one of those works of the flesh that's that is open that is um, written in the book of galatians 5 so i actually took it god very very seriously i'm not saying that i'm a pro yet because <laughs> i can't say <laughs> i'm not but i know that actually god is actually helping me um to to work on it which is that point really talking to god about it and the second thing i want to say is that i really be- see that sometimes i won't say this for everybody but most of the times i say that um mood swings is usually a projection of your own personal insecurity and your own personal um self doubts of your self image and everything and i don't know to what extent this happens to a lot of a lot of girls right but i believe that it actually plays a very very vital role in the sense that and if we don't solve that it is if you still have some maybe some low self-esteem self issues and everything you feel you are not maybe beautiful enough you're not good enough because i used to feel i wasn't good enough right and i realized that when that thing is touched exactly during that period of time when i'm on my cycle when you touch that because i have not settled that personal um security issue inside of me it just goes in do you understand what i'm trying to say it just really affects but the moment i it escalates it exactly but the moment i started understanding so the reason why i'm able to even detach my emotions from my project is because i have i'm coming to a place that i know that regardless of what i give out i am good enough regardless of what i i give out it doesn't it doesn't affect my person it doesn't it's not that's not all which she is and i think that solving that issue of 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 your personal insecurity self-esteem issues it really goes a very long way in even limiting those triggers because and also to order to say that identifying the things that you are trying to hide from yourself things you are lying to yourself about right maybe you feel like oh yeah uh, oh god how can i say this <laughs> maybe you feel like something is not paining you but it's actually paining you but you're like telling yourself that this doesn't hurt me if someone does something that is very close to that your it will just affect your entire mood right so sometimes you have to be very truthful with yourself and tell yourself that only she this is how you actually feel about this particular thing this is how you feel about this particular person this is how you feel about this particular circumstance right and when you are real to yourself in that area in that aspect it just makes things a whole lot easier for you and you just realize that those triggers are not there they're not they don't have such power like they used to before once you begin to solve like all those those external issues yeah please sorry for me to just I, I really love that because that's what i meant by when i said you have to have a healthy relationship with yourself 
mm. because I was trying not to go into details because of time, like having real conversations with God, with people, and yourself. Because actually, most times it emphasizes what is already on the inside of you. Yes, yeah, very. So correct. for me, I I know that. For me, I know it, it's sadness. It's not inside of me in Jesus' name, but it, you guys, you know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. It for some people, it just they just get very angry. Some people, they just very bitter. Very. I mean, it, yes, it ranges. The expressions are actually very different. Yeah, it's already like something that's already just there sitting inside of you. But I realized that with time, like the more you you actually have these conversations with the Lord and with yourself, normally before it's always always to the negative side. But now I can be in that cycle, have a mood, and I'll just be right there in the middle, like I am at peace. So either it's like it's weird it's that even that piece of that it's just weird like why am i just really can do anything i just be smiling it's okay i might not be smiling but nothing is seemingly getting to to me in the way that emotions yes Yes, because it's almost as if i have closed it in and said oh yeah jesus just cycle this surround this emotion i've kept it in the hands of god it's like i can't guard this thing by myself i don't know if i should guard our heart i can't guard it so god just take it and do it and do the guarding over me so sometimes that's, that's what i just that's that what it means to have a healthy relationship with yourself and also another thing is how you see most things we see it as a negative thing because most times it tends to have negative impact right or maybe things that we do and everything but I think having a positive outlook on what mood swing is can help. For me, I see it as a time to grow. I see it as a time to identify something in my life or a soul work in my life that I, I need to change. You get, I'm not somebody that will naturally shout at somebody, but I'm, I can be that person that would snub you if I feel like I'm not really in that place to talk yet or just anything like that. And I realized that, okay, this is not right. I mean, I know some somebody's smiling right now because like yeah you have never my message but it's like this is I know that this is not like this is not right so how can I try to have this conversation even in my mood swing and still be the best version of myself instead of trying to just see it as oh it's a bad thing I I know I'm going to mess up no I am in this mood yes okay how can i try to navigate it and with time the more you do that you grow with that you grow you just find yourself doing things better doing things regardless of how you feel because that's what god has called us to do that's that's the point of of the cross that's the point of living like jesus you won't always feel like it but are you able to try to are you able to do it without feeling like it so for me I see it like that. So now when I have moods, instead of me, oh my God, there's now I'll start, it's all me really frustrated. I'm like, yes, it's, it's another time to explore how I'm going to survive this without killing somebody. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know that time has gone, but there was something that Lovely mentioned. And when she was talking about it, it's another opportunity for you to realize how much of the self-life is still, is still alive inside of you. Mm. and I think that is something that is very 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 because you begin to realize the worst of yourself especially during this period of time if not maybe the worst of yourself your, your, your tendencies the tendencies that your, the, the human heart has and they're able to know that okay God I actually this is here oh my god i did not know and then did i just do that (laughs) yes and then you are bringing it again to because i'm "I'm a very nice person but when you don't see yourself in that light i'm like but then you are bringing into the cross and you're and you're asking god and you're telling god okay yes okay i have seen this this is strange this is not me but okay but it has shown god what like let's let like we sh- this should be worked upon so now this is not even the mood swing right but this is something inside that is not even that mm. mood swing was just like an expression but there's something else that mm. needs to also be worked upon that is not the mood swing i got <laughs> i'm so issues. sorry that was deep issues. Deep, deep issues deep issues yeah wow wow beloved listeners i hope I mean, sorry to interrupt you. Even though time has gone, I think um, one thing is coming to my mind. I wanted to ask this question, and I'm already glad. So, the que- I'll tell you why I'm glad. The question is, of course, I talked about people seeing mood swings as a man's problem to handle, which I think is wrong, because women should be taught how to handle it. I don't think it is wrong for men to play a role, absolutely at all, right? Um, of course, if 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 it's a married man, then it's his business from start to finish stop nodding your head stop nodding your heads but if, if it's a married man that a married man it's his business from start to finish this is his wife right but for an unmarried man what can 
your male friends do to help you during this time i'm already happy that we don't need to buy chocolates and flowers <laughs> but, but be practical if you can be practical with bullet points what can your male friends do to help i love you? that like, i love that I really love that question, but I forgot to mention there are some things we didn't mention also about handling it. These exercises and eating well helps. Eat fruits and exercise helps to boost your mood. Guys, okay, now I'm shouting. <laughs> I'll let you please go. <laughs> go first. I'm still trying to write out my points, but I think the first thing that I think that every girl should have is a very spiritual and understanding male friend. I feel like as a woman, you should actually, I feel like as a woman, you should actually search for it, right? Have someone around you with a man that's spiritual and understanding because not every, not every month you'll be the super person, not every month will be perfect. But when you have people around you, friends around you as a guy, guys around you who are very understanding who can talk sense to your head and who can also understand that okay this is like an emotional need that you have during that period of time i think it will actually really help there are some guys that are just totally inconsiderate and everything but when you have guys who are actually very considerate and okay okay they, they know so the first thing i'll ask for guys is that just please not everybody knows how to and it's not every month it's not every time we win right so don't since we are learning since we are growing just be patient with us as we as we grow and also to be very mindful of the kind of things that you say okay sometimes you might actually not know which time the joke will not eat right right so you have to be led by the holy ghost to know when to give the right joke or whether to give the right joke but also to i think just be generally very mindful of if you have a very good female friend, you have to be generally mindful of, of, of her, right? Some girls are not as sensitive as, as other girls, so which, which is which is also something that we should mention. Some girls even have this, like, what is what are you talking about? It's not as deep as you are saying it, it is, right? So just be very, very considerate, be helpful. And for me, I actually have, like, chocolates sugar related things we already we already closed that chapter we already closed no, that no, chapter. no 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 i'm not telling you i'm not i'm not going with it. i'm not saying that i'm not i'm not telling you it, it there's this particular kind of chocolate thing right it actually does work i, I anytime i take it i don't feel good and i just yeah. it does biologically yeah biologically um there is something inside chocolates that help you women they're mostly made for women than for men yeah. so I, I don't know what it is I, I won't lie to you and I had to actually stop taking it because it was as if if I'm not good that was my run too and it's I had someone that used to supply it I had someone that used to supply it it's not good for that to become your fuel because no 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 that's what I'm saying that I had to actually like stop taking it for a while mm-hmm. right All of right. course I could not afford it anymore but I had to stop Thank taking God. it God. <laughs> God works in different ways, <laughs> works in different ways. <laughs> that it could help so i think being considerate and understanding i think that and don't make a joke out of it don't make the girl feel like she's she's overreacting or she's just being a girl hmm. that kind of thing yeah. that boys say you have said a lot you have said a lot because okay thank well you. allow me here. yeah i'm sorry no you can go ahead and then i'll no no i don't have a trans my, my, my. <laughs> just, okay just so just I, I feel like um Honestly, if someone were to ask me this on a random day, what I would say is just be a good man. The issue is that some men, and okay, let me not go that route. Be a you good man. Go, you, can go, you can touch, go, you can and go, you can go. And be in touch with your emotions. Because a man that is not in touch with his emotions cannot help someone that is in touch with her emotions. It, you, you, you would find it difficult to. You find it difficult to understand why she's so. It, it, when you don't understand something, you are not able to react to it properly. Yeah, yeah, so be right. a good man normally that is, that is in touch with emotions it's okay to ask questions it's okay to just be nice for no reason mm. like just be a good i don't know how to emphasize that just be a good person who is a good and man secondly is to ask the lord how to deal with her because sometimes some people for me if you buy me chocolate for instance i might even be more angry with you because <laughs> why do you want to kill me <laughs> But it depends. So it's you can asking the Lord how to asking the Lord how to deal with her sometimes really, really helps because there are some things that I feel like I need that I wouldn't even know. 
it, it happens sometimes I'm just not in a good like I'm just there and then someone walks into my room not necessarily to have a conversation because I don't want to talk but just like you know, can we watch this movie together and yeah we're watching the movie ah. and it's no it's 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 practice when you're saying ah sorry I'm sorry <laughs> You can open the door <laughs> if you are afraid. <laughs> but just, wow. just n- like run, just asking the Lord what, what it might be something you, can, you need to get for her. You can just be like, can I pray with you? Just asking the Lord for me. I feel like it really helps. Because sometimes I feel like I need something, but I don't even know what I need. <laughs> so, so, so one of the IRM has to communicate it to you. That okay, this is what she needs. So, and again, there are different ladies, different people. Don't mm. take it. Don't see it as a rule of thumb. This works for this person, so this should work for the person. Yeah. For some other people, for some people, when they're like that, they just need a pat on their back. But for some people, if you talk to them, they can tear you apart. So, <laughs> so <laughs> just recognizing that. I think, I think the yeah. chocolate and flowers are even easier than than. <laughs> Just yeah, some ones that you want to feel touched, there's a one that you don't want anybody to come near you at all. No. That's that's you, you need the Holy Spirit actually. You're correct, but I'm a That's interesting. Uh have we helped you, Brofati? To be able to You've given me more issue more reasons to pray and to hear from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's but, a good thing. But it is good to know at least. <laughs> It is good to know at least. And uh, personally, I found that some of my female friends have it more intense than others. Mm. And it's good to know that it is biology, so I don't have to blame one for not having self control as much as the other. Right. Yeah. And then Olamide has talked about being a good man. Yes. I was going to ask who is a good man, but I think I get the point. Right. <laughs> Just being maybe kind is a more appropriate kind. word okay who is kind and <laughs> um nice not sarcastic and not um not harsh right so all of that is um like you've said since wood for you this month might be different from next month right and next yeah. month might, might be different from the third month so in this case i think only god actually has. I'm, I'm <laughs> very, god yes, <laughs> i think i think you can do more for yourself than any man would ever be yeah, able to do for you definitely so, I think the, th- the things you said about being in touch with your, yourself and aware of yourself and all of that are very important. And I was very excited about the answers that you gave, like Olamide and Oluji. Because um, all that is happening with the emotions, with the swinging of the moods, even though it has a biological root, it's rooted, it's rooted in your body, but the feelings and the emotions are rooted in the soul. Yeah. Now, when God created the original man, he created the man to be ruled by his spirit. His soul and his body were subservient to his spirit. When man fell, the life of God in his spirit departed, and then the soul and the body went upwards. And then, of course, if you, I mean, theologically speaking, many people say there was a merging, you know, that created the flesh, the sinful nature. Now, when we become born again, the life of God comes into our spirit once again, but the spirit is no longer on the throne, right? Because the default state of every man is that the soul, the flesh, is on the throne. So when he receives God's life in his spirit, the second journey for every Christian is to um, bring the body and the soul in subjection to the spirit to restore God's original pattern. You know, so those who are the sons of God are those who are led by the spirit, right? So this is just some theology. But the point is, um, even for boys, boys have issues in a different way. We recorded something about that, I'm sure. It's going to be up. So boys have issues in a different way, also connected to the hormones. But then that's in the realm of the body and the soul. So once somebody who has, once somebody has learned to and bring the body and the soul under subjection to the spirit, then that person can overcome every such issue, right? So let's not forget that all of this is rooted in the soul. The Bible says that if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you will live, right? Because as many as are led by the spirit of God and the sons of God, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your body. So is the spirit giving life to the body? The body is only serving the spirit. Now, this requires some maturity and some conformity, of course. That's why when people get more spiritual, that's why I was like, it, it just clicked. It just made sense when Lamide talked about spending time in the presence of God. I don't want to talk about it and then coming out and just feeling much better. That's because according to the new design, in the new creation, the spiritual life is the ruler. The soul and the body are subservient to it. So whenever, and what, fasting also, what, another thing that brings the spirit up and the soul and the body down is fasting. 
Right? What fasting does is the same thing being in the presence of God for long does. It just energizes the spirit and then brings those other things down. So I think that's why somebody who is um, a Christian and who makes some progress with God is going to automatically, not automatically, but it's going to get to a point where this will no longer be so much of an issue. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Wow. <laughs> I've enjoyed the conversation so far. <laughs> and I believe that our listeners also have been enjoying it. It's been a journey, right? From, <laughs> from knowing if mood swings are real to why we need to handle it to some of our experiences. Like for us to know that it's relatable, it's not, you know, something there. Yeah, it's something common or normal. And then moving to how we could handle our emotion, our emotions, how we could handle the mood swing. So I don't know. I think a sentence that I could use to bring a summary to what we've talked about is that there's provision in God for handling our um, mood swing, right? God did Sorry. just leave us. Okay. I said that's right. Yeah. So he didn't just leave us to be wondering about with our biological problems and all of that. Because <laughs> I think. <laughs> Some ladies, like, my, they feel worse. Like, why is this happening to me? Why is God allowing something like this to happen? And all of that. But there's provision in God. I think, or let me mention peace when you spend time in the presence of God. And then there's self-control and all of that. And Prophet talked about, like, walking in the spirit and you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh, right? So there's provision in God for handling our mood swings. As we spend more time with God and... Uh, he um and find our place in him dealing with the insecurities in us and all of that and of course the physical things that we need to do that we've already mentioned exercising eating well communicating right and uh, using the opportunity to grow and all of that so as we do this we believe and we know that the holy spirit will help each and every one of us right to bring to come to a balance with our emotions and with this uh mood swing right yes okay i think we'll draw the curtain here do we have any final word from anyone any final word before we we say goodbye i will say that we are i'm waiting for you girls we can actually live above this actually by the grace of god yeah that's good it's good to hear that <laughs> so for, for, for us guys um just be good okay guys be good be kind um yeah i think kindness is much cheaper than chocolates <laughs> <laughs>